I'll tell you a little bit of my background and why we did uh, JIT uh, in uh, Northeastern area. That question has been asked of me a couple times. Uh, why uh, did you guys open it up? Anyways, uh, I was here back in 1978 for a very short duration to do my MSc. Even though I got admission in Osmania University at that time, I'm confessing here for the first time in the front of the crowd, I lied to my parents. I wanted to rediscover North India and that was one of the reasons why I took admission in Aligarh. After spending a few months, uh, I had quite a bit of interaction and uh, I was not known by my name as Maksud, but uh, very, few people, very few of them knew me by name, but the uh, majority of them used to call me Nako, being from Hyderabad. So, uh, I, uh, in my very first sentence, I might have spoken Nako instead of saying Na, and that's how I was known here. But anyways, um, Alhamdulillah, after completing from here, uh, I went to Middle East, worked as a geologist, and then from there, after getting married and settled down in Chicago since 85, and uh, engaged with a consulting firm uh, working as a geologist. But uh, along the way, I uh, got involved into the community services, and uh, one of the organizations that you're seeing here, it's called IMRC and uh, involved with them for past 25 years. And the main focus of Indian Muslim Relief in Charities is to help Indian Muslims. And I have a very short presentation. I'll zip through that and then uh, take you to JIT. But the main thing that uh, we started this uh, IMRC was uh, after the communal riots uh, in Assam uh, more than 30 years back, and uh, which brings us back to the last year that, uh, again, that thing happened. But uh, as a relief organization, that was the main thing that we were doing. And for 20 plus years, we have uh, done projects for millions of dollars over here. And uh, we looked at it and said, uh, we need to change our approach. And instead of just doling it out uh, in the relief uh, way, uh, in including education and health care, uh, we went into so-called legacy projects. I'll uh, walk you through that uh, in a minute. So one of the educational projects we call is uh, JIT. That's one of the legacy projects that we are doing. So as an uh, Aligarh alum, uh, here I am back home, like somebody was uh, referring to in the morning session. You leave from here, but you come back home. So I'm back home here in front of you. Anyways, well, we all know, I'll zip through this, how many people live in India, what do we do, and how many of them are under poverty. So, uh, some of the programs that we uh, do throughout India here, uh, all the way from food grain distribution to literally millions of people. And we have about 1,200 uh, plus volunteers that uh, do this job. And uh, emergency relief, uh, especially for the Muzaffar Nagar, we have done quite a bit. And in Assam, uh, also, uh, quite a bit of relief projects that we did. I'm not here to explain to you about that, but just to give a brief background on what it is. And uh, we had been helping uh, lots of patients as well. Very recently, just two years back, we opened a very boutique hospital in Hyderabad. Uh, it's a 70-bedded hospital, but it's a multi-speciality hospital. And uh, one of the key things there are two specialties, uh, all ophthalmology and uh, the uh, renal uh, failure is very prominent in uh, Hyderabad for some reason, I don't know. Uh, so we have opened up a nice uh, Dallas Center. And if anybody is interested in opening Dallas Centers, please uh, let me know. I'll try and help you guys uh, by donating some Dallas machines. And we bring uh, doctors from there uh, throughout states and uh, conduct camps. We did uh, at four, uh, in four different states just uh, last month, uh, they have all gone back. Another very key project that we were talking about establishing schools, we call READ, Rural Education and uh, Economic Development. Uh, we have started this in Andhra Pradesh, we'll be going in the coastal areas of Orissa and coming up further uh, up to Punjab, inshallah. But currently we have completed about 70, 60 locations that we are calling here, but as of uh, last month we have done 70 schools. These are like very, uh, in villages. Uh, we've done a complete demographic survey and after finding out the, their needs, 
We have built about 70 so far. Our target in Andhra is 400 schools. And here, both secular as well as uh, relig religious uh, studies are given. And then, you know, in addition to that, depending on their needs, uh, we provide uh, some uh, assistance to establish themselves in uh, uh, their respective uh, businesses. There's another program uh, throughout India. We're trying to, inshallah, do this. Uh, uh, we have done more than 100 uh, wells already, uh, bore wells program, uh, especially in the areas where it's hard to fetch water and clean water. So we are doing that. Another excellent school and an orphanage in Hyderabad, uh, one of uh, the best school there, uh, state of the art. Uh, we are calling it Challenger International School. And uh, as of uh, this year, we have more than 500 students there. Majority of them, again, majority of them are from orphanages, but they get uh, top class education, alhamdulillah. All right, then I come to Jangrabad, near Lucknow, uh, about 27 miles uh, from Lucknow, as it's uh, fort of uh, Raja Rasul Saab there. We bought that about uh, 13 years back and converted it into a uh, technological institute. One of the questions, uh, even today and yesterday, while I was in Delhi meeting with a couple of people, they asked from Hyderabad, and why did you select it, Jahangirabad? Again, this takes uh, me back to 78 and our group who had been working in Northeast India, especially knowing the most populous state for the Muslims is UP, and then Bihar and uh, Jharkhand now in Assam where we are economically challenged quite a bit. So we had been doing smaller projects with them. So we had this uh, intention of not establishing another oligarch, but similar to that line, uh, let's establish a school. And Alhamdulillah, we bought about, uh, initially it was a 50 acre uh, palace, and uh, we converted that into classrooms and all. Currently, we have about 70 acres. We, more than 300,000 square feet of the buildings uh, with, uh, as, uh, I have five minute video also, I'll show you that uh, very quickly. But uh, currently we have uh, about 310 uh, students there. And again, majority of them come from the families who cannot afford even, uh, forget about the fee uh, staying or even uh, their mess hall charges. So we try and accommodate as much and if uh, there are fee paying students we take them also this is a engineering college with five disciplines uh, from civil mechanical electrical electronics uh, and computers in addition to that we have mba and uh, the mba we have had so far three uh, batches that passed out and alhamdulillah we have somehow managed to get uh, all 100 percent placements and the very first batch for the engineering will be coming out uh, this year and uh, there are plans to place them as well but there are special programs that we have for students it is a very sophisticated uh, just like uh, our PC I was telling this morning we have uh, uh, here in Aligarh smart classrooms we have smart classrooms there and uh, top-notch uh, library and uh, other facilities that you will see I mean, the, the one that you're seeing there is the general admin building up on the top and the new uh, engineering building that is completed and there are other uh, buildings that are still uh, up for construction. So, um, we, we do have uh, bachelors in, um, what do you call, education and BTC, a diploma course that the Indian uh, government has uh, recently awarded. Uh, so it's uh, two years after 10 plus 2 and uh, inshallah mtech uh, is also uh, being awarded uh, to start in 2014 uh, for this current semester i don't know and i don't want to let the cat out of the bag after hearing uh, the speeches today i mean uh, we did this with the intention so that our community here especially in the northeast india flourish and um, our trustees including myself uh, um, you know, you never know how long anybody lives, but uh, this could, I don't know, uh, could be a potential candidate to become the Aligarh extension. I don't know, I'm not saying that, but inshallah we can work towards that so that, you know, as an alumni, at least the minimum we can do. So that's all about RMRC, and give me one sec, I'll play very quickly. Jack. 
Akinabad Educational Trust was set up in the year 2001 to promote the technical and professional education. The first course offered by the Trust was in the field of electronic media with the objective of providing secular minded media professionals to the society. The initiative was taken by our Honorable Chairman, Mr. Manzoor Gauri. Thank you so much. But, uh, before I leave, uh, just hold on to your applause for a sec. A uh, couple things uh, that we are looking forward to. Any of our, the faculty that are interested in becoming visiting uh, lecturers, professors, uh, whatever, will be more than happy to invite you uh, to Jagirabad. That's number one. If you know of students who are meritorious, 85% and above, will waive complete tuition fee for them. Complete. They'll have to pay just zero. Okay? And uh, inshallah, uh, in addition to that, uh, we were, uh, when we was in uh, Chicago, uh, we were trying to meet, uh, we just met for maybe a couple of minutes and after that he was so busy we could not and there were some requests and this morning also I heard, um, inshallah, uh, there are some expectations from the alumni and uh, there's a very famous saying and uh, people from the states would know, don't look at what the country has given to you but uh, look at what you can give it back to your country. So I'm changing that uh, to look at what AMU has given to you and what can you give back to AMU. Inshallah, uh, just for the attention of uh, uh, VCSAP, uh, if there is a tangible project up to $100,000, let us know, Inshallah, we'll fulfill it for AMU. Yeah. Great, thank you, Samayin. Samayin Ikram. Abhi hamare Sheikh Masood Khadri Saab ne apni خدمات کے کچھ گوشے اجاگر کیے اور بحیثیت ایک علمنائی کے ان کی خدمات کا یہ سلسلہ جاری ہے اور ہم دعا کرتے ہیں کہ یہ مزید اس میدان میں ترقیاں کریں جس طرح سے ایک ادارہ اتنے شاندار پیمانے پر قائم کیا ہے اور اس میں بڑی خدمات انجام دے رہے ہیں میں ان سے یہ بھی گزارش کروں گا کہ ہمارے اس مادر درزگاہ میں سیٹھیں محدود ہونے کی وجہ سے بہت سے ہمارے یہاں سے پاس آؤ ٹویلت کے بچے انجینئرنگ میں داخلے سے محروم رہ جاتے ہیں میں ان سے یہ گزارش کروں گا کہ وہ یہاں کے طلبہ کو اپنے یہاں داخلہ دینے میں جو ڈیزرونگ سٹوڈنٹس ہیں بالخصوص ریایتیں اتنی دیں کہ ہمارے طلبہ اگلا قدم یہاں سے جہاں گریر آباد انسٹیٹیوٹ آف ٹیکنالوجی میں رکھیں تاکہ اس کے مستقبل کو سوارا جا سکے بہت بہت شکریہ